market very strong. Uh, yesterday, the spies took out 282 uh, at two o'clock um, and got hit with a little sell pressure. Um, pulled back almost to 281. This morning, we come in, we're at 282 again. Looks like um, six o'clock this morning, a little sell pressure. But we are. I talk about Domo. It's a little bit thin, Domo. The buyers are in control. Um, are we getting overextended? Not really. I would think if we had another another update through 282, worked our way into the 283 and a half, 284, that would seem a little bit extended to me. Um, from a pure statistics standpoint, you know, we gapped up, we went up, we gapped up, we kind of just stayed. We gapped up, we went up. Um, so today, if we ripped up a, a dollar and a half, two dollars, I think that uh, that definitely could be meet with um, some pretty strong selling pressure, um, and they could reverse and come back into this area here. Um, if we just consolidate above 280, um, I think we talked about. I think we talked about at the beginning of the week, maybe by the end of the week, we could close close strong. I think that would be enough time. Um, definitely by next week, I think it will be enough time. Again, here's the here's the uptrend off the December lows. It's just we're moving back inside of it now, um, and by next week, uh, that certainly will have been enough time. Um, obviously, IWM continues. You know, was weaker on the way down, had a nice bounce off the low, but now is just not not being bought. So I would say this: like if it stays below 156 and or even gets a little bit above 156 into this area here and the market starts to sell off this one this one's probably a pretty good reward on the short side this is uh i'm not thinking about this catching up more than than uh, the relative weakness again um all right ktx so this one is already traded four million shares which is the average daily volume um FDA approves their clinical trial design. So let's look at the daily just to see the history of this quickly. So we know back the last time it went nuts was about a year and a half ago. Um, and it went up to eight. And then we saw it pull back for a few days into five before ripping up to 12. So it's kind of like that's what people are looking at. And again, these stocks then go up like this. That's the game people play. All the experienced traders. Um, are looking at this and they're saying, okay, we pile in, kind of where can this thing get to? And, you know, these are our upside targets. So news comes out, um, gets bought very heavily, holds about four and a half, um, closes strong. And now is is gapping up about fifty percent from yesterday's yesterday's close. If we zoom in into the five minute, so buyers in control, no red, straight up to nine. Finally, some sellers above nine dollars got up to nine and a half. Quick dollar pullback. Once once traders see this, the, the dollar pullback, they want to see what happens the next time it comes up. Are their sellers a little bit lower? It looks like it was trying to make a lower high. It did actually get a spike to the high. Um, and now the sellers have come down lower. The eight and a half is the pullback low. Now eight is the pullback low. Another lower high. So they're trying to get this thing to pull back. Um, what do I have in the sheet? I got eight, 10, 12. Okay. So right now it's it's still above what potentially was first resistance and it's making lower highs. So this is gonna be, on the open, it's gonna be whether or not this kind of holds here at $8 or flushes below a little and then gets back above eight. Um, if it's straight down on the open, and then it can't reclaim eight, this maintains this kind of downtrend from the pre-market, work its way all the way back down. So it's just 100% um, on the price action. Just looking to see, looks like guys are playing on the long side still. So it's probably people are probably still looking to trade on the long side unless it uh, unless it starts to hold below eight dollars, which is good. Um, CLBR. 
this one they guided down. So in these situations when they guide down in revenue like that, which is really bad news, we want to just make sure um, there isn't a good chance that it could be priced in. So we just want to see where it's been. So it's a pretty wild chart since it IPO'd. Um, so it gapped down here about a last, I guess, four quarters ago on earnings. Um, and then it bounced all the way back to 20. So it got that low. Pretty good bounce off of $10. 50% bounce off the low. And they warned again. So it's basically gapping into this area right here. So the question is, how much of this was priced into this? Is it enough for it to support here above $12 and shake this off? I'm kind of neutral on it. Like I, I would love to, to short it like into 13. It's actually, looks like it bounced there already. So you can see in the after hours when the news came out, it flushed to 12, it got back up, it failed here at 13. It looks like they're going to challenge 13 in the pre-market or even on the open. Um, what do I have on the sheet? 12, 18, 12, 80 to 13 resistance, then 1340. Good. And then 14. So I would say if the news is already priced in, what you would see is just a strong move through 13 on the open, and then it would hold above it. And then you'd see something like that. Um, if it's just... If it's not priced in, what you're going to see is this pop here as I'm talking about it. Um, it's going to fail somewhere between here and here. And then it'll start holding below 1280 when the market opens. And it'll just work its way back down to $12. And then we'll kind of say, that is that. ATOS. ATOS, the news was OK. Like they have an FDA approval on post mastectomy, mastectomy treatment. Um, let's go to the longer term on this one. So obviously just a very, very beaten down name. Probably did a bunch of reverse blitz. That's why it's showing $400 prices here. So can somebody put the float in the chat, whatever it is. I'm assuming it's extremely low with the reverse splits. Uh, it's actually not bad, five million. So it's still obviously, you know, this the Spencer rule of is the float low enough and the price low enough that like the larger traders on the desk could actually buy the entire float um, still applies. Um, so it would be an unusually large position for them to use all their buying power on one stock, but it uh, it's it can be controlled by a few larger traders, and so those are. You know, the stocks that can be more easily manipulated. Um, oh, 10. 10. 10 is actually a little bit better. So that means it's it's going to be a little bit tougher to uh, kind of push it up, at least beyond the prices we're looking at right here. So looks like Shark's trying it on the short side. OK, so let's zoom in. So it's done 4 million shares, which is about 40 times its average daily volume in the pre-market. So yeah, it's super in play. Um, I guess it's going to do like 50 million shares today or something crazy like that. Um, I think I think it's kind of neutral to buyers in control right now. I mean, it went up here. There clearly was a lot of selling in the 560s area. But yeah, 560s. Um, it got bought just now a dollar lower than that. And really, it's going to be the question, does it hold higher here and then start to kind of break to the upside? Um, so what do I have in the sheet? Six and eight. So, it, OK, it's going to come down to like, you know, does it cleanly break above six and hold above there? And then there's nothing. I didn't see anything till eight. Um, we'll take a look at DJ. That's something I think we traded a few weeks ago. Um, so yeah, you prepare to trade it either way. Um, 
if it fails right on the open to like, you know, get above here and then you see it holding below $5, there's a good chance then it, it comes back into, into, into this range down here and just starts to trend lower. So prepare it either direction on this one. Um, BG looks like a warning. I know they report, they report, it looks like on my platform it's coded blue, which means they reported. I think they report in the pre-market, so that might be right. <sighs> they missed by four cents. The revenues were in line. It's about a 2% miss on, uh, e on revenue. Oh, excuse me, on EPS. It's down enough that we should see where it is in relation to the longer term. See if we can spot where we traded it last time. I guess this was the last earnings. So the last earnings, it gapped down to 110 and got crushed. Obviously, I re, you know, they didn't really miss by much. So I mean, I didn't see the guidance, so that might be the key. But it's down like 7% right now, which is a lot for missing by a couple of percent on the EPS. And the EPS were pretty good. Revenue was fine. Um, it's probably the guidance. I, I'm not going to offer a strong anything without knowing the guidance, but I would say that obviously there's going to be people looking to buy it right here. So basically, if the guidance is okay, what you'd be looking at is it would retake this this recent support and get above 114. Otherwise, um, it's in trouble. Uh, PDD. So PDD, we are still not sure. Got hammered yesterday. Initially, a positive reaction. I saw something after hours, some articles about the margins. So we didn't have that information when we were doing the morning meeting yesterday, but that could be why... Um, it closed week, even though it tried to bounce in the morning from basically got down to 20, almost to 20, it's 24 and a half. And it went up about a buck, buck and change, um, but closed week. So it's now bringing, you know, if it stays, it spends some time below 25, it's bringing kind of the bottom of this consolidation into play. Let's zoom in. And I think what I, when I looked at the longer term chart, I, 23 and a quarter was the bottom of that area. So um, it's going to come down to, by the way, it tried to balance yesterday. So in the morning, it put in the low. This was pretty good pop back, held higher, got to, but it could never retake 26. Um, and then the sellers stepped down into the 60s. And that's where it did a lot of volume on, on the way down initially. That was, it, it uh, kind of got clobbered from there. And so they were still selling it on the way back up. Now this accumulation for an hour at right around the half led me to believe that maybe we challenged 26 again. So I, I bought right there, um, just got stopped out here and I think here. Um, looking at it this morning, e either way, I mean, basically if it, if it, if right on the open, it flushes to yesterday's low and retakes it and is back above 25, and I'd be looking for it to work its way back up to this morning bounce from yesterday and see what happens from there. Um, if it's actually holding below 24.50, then I'd be thinking about that 23 and a quarter downside. Um, Roku. So, ba -ba 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 -ba, Roku. Okay, so Roku came off. Um, actually, first move was up on the, on the open yesterday, right? So buyers stepped in on the gap down. Um, you may have heard us chatting about this, Jeff and I chatting about it yesterday, but basically when the buyers step in like this, you want to see on the pullback, it really kind of holds 68. Um, and so we said, okay, if it pulls back to 68, maybe give it a little try. Um, but otherwise it could be in trouble. Um, I think when it came, went down to the morning low and got back above, you thought, okay, you gave that a shot there because that is, you know, it retakes the morning low. Um, it's not that far from the low and you give it a shot. So I think you gave it a shot here, but then when it failed, stopped out. Um, I definitely tried a bunch of times when I came back to the desk when it was in this area right here. Um, got crushed on this down move, really. Um, 
and give it another shot at 60-50. Like when this, this held here, I think I got stopped out here, then it held, so I bought it. Um, went up about $1.50, and then it was holding here for hours, and then finally right at the end of the day, they stopped some people out. It's actually below 60 in the after hours, or pre-market. So the best the best risk reward trade is probably an options trade. I don't know if it's gonna, this is going to happen again, but basically, yesterday what I was thinking when it was up at 62 was if it flushed below 60 today into the close to 59, you could sell the 55 puts um, out at least a couple weeks and buy the 65s, and basically that would pay for your call option. And obviously, being low in the in the lower 50s would be phenomenal. Um, I, unlikely that it would get there, but that would be great. Otherwise, you would be just have a free kind of call option if it bounced back up to the high 60s. So that, that's the trade. Um, it did get an upgrade from Needham. I'm not sure how much people are going to pay attention to it. I would think if it took out this resistance here at 62 and a half, it could go up to 64, 65. Um, but that would be about it.